This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Um, we're going to be reviewing a perfume today by Louis Vuitton from their exclusive range. Well, Louis Vuitton only has the exclusive range. Uh, they only sell within their boutiques or on their website. And it is called California Dream. I have received uh, a sample. Little tiny sample. Their vials are actually really adorable. They don't just do glass vials. They color them in the same colorways that they uh, would utilize for their bottles once you purchase them. So we have a gradient here, kind of like a lilac, pinky gradient going on on this bottle. You can kind of see how it goes from that lilac to that rosy color. So this is California Dream. Before we get to spraying it and smelling it together, let me tell you something. If you like my content but haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel today. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today. You get extra perks as a member of the Fashion Bunker. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decob All Spelled Together, and gain access to extra perks there as well. And thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. Also, thank you to all my co-reviewers of this fragrance who are live in the chat here because as you've heard at the beginning of this video, we are filming this live. Also, if you're liking what you're seeing, don't forget to thumb up this video and let the YouTube algorithm know that we is doing something right here. Also push that notifications button to get notified every time a new video is uploaded. Okay, let's spray this perfume. So hello to all my code chatters. Um, I already have the dry down here, but I'm going to refresh it now. So I have the memory of the dry down. And we're going to zest it up. Now this... This fragrance, Jacques Cavalier Beltrude, is the nose behind this fragrance. It came out in 2020. And um, hmm, let me just read to you. I mean, it's, it's very simple, the structure of it, actually. Now, I know that in the past, the uh, Louis Vuitton fragrances that I have reviewed, almost none of them really left strong of an impression on me to be able to tell you, oh, this warrants a standalone purchase, like a full bottle purchase. None of them thus far really took me there so fully to commit to a full bottle because they ain't cheap. Let's see if California Dream helps us get there. Now, Mandarin Orange, Musk Pear, Ambrette, Musk Mallow, and Benzoin. It is marketed as a unisex fragrance. California Dream, with citrusy and warm oriental notes, says Louis Vuitton, captures the sunset in a bottle, the sky above LA, and the mood of this city. It contains notes of Mandarin, Pear, Musk, as well as Ambrette, Seed, and Benzoin. The perfumer's idea was to contrast the explosive freshness with the softer notes, as the warmth surrounding the cool tones. The colors of the bottle and the packaging are designed by LA artist Alex Israel under the name Sky Backdrop. The fragrance is available as 100 and 200 milliliter eau de parfum. It's so fascinating to me how all of these um, perfume houses, except for Chanel and Dior, they don't use the name of their perfumers. You see, how, you notice how they say, um, the perfumer's idea was to contrast, blah, blah, blah. They don't say Jacques Cavalier, who is the perfumer, the head perfumer of Louis Vuitton. It was his idea to blah, blah, The same happens in other houses, like for Guerlain, for example. They do not mention Thierry Vassa's name. It's also the perfumer. Just in case they're going to change the perfumer, they don't have to, you know, his name is gone as well. Find that a little bit sketchy. Give the, give the guy credit. Now, I know these perfumers don't work alone. They have big teams working with them, and oftentimes it's the smaller people within that team that are actually the ones who deserve the credit but never get it. Welcome to show business. Welcome to fashion. Welcome to the perfume world. It's never just. It's always, you know, it's never fair. It's never fair. It's just, that's the name of the game. It's good to speak about it openly. That's the first step towards changing it. But you're also not going to hear this said often uh, on YouTube when people review stuff like this. So anyway, going all out on it. So let me tell you where it's at. The um, I am not a fan usually of Mandarin Orange or Tangerine. This is more Mandarin. But this is the first time ever in a fragrance that I have smelt 
the peel, the skin of Mandarin. It's, it's literally that omnipresent and intense. Okay, so this automatically makes it a fresh slash from the citrus family citrusy fragrance, which a lot of people are not into. A lot of people are as well. You know, citrusy fragrances are usually the ones that have that connotation of being Cologne-esque, lighter things, because citruses on some skins, on my skin, lemon, bergamot, they tend to, they're very fleeting. They don't, they don't stick around. What sticks around on my skin usually is neroli, which is kind of the dirty cousin of the orange, and orange. Mandarin, in this particular way, really harpoons itself to my skin uh, unlike all the other mandarins that I've tried and other fragrances, which are much more synthetic and plasticky smelling, this one does smell also synthetic, but less than others. It has something very natural about it, which I do enjoy if I were to enjoy mandarin smell, but I'm not a big fan. So this does not affect my judgment of this perfume in terms of quality of it, it's just my personal preference. I'm not a big fan of mandarin or orange openings. Uh, but if you are, if you are a fan of mandarin in particular, this thing is bomb because the mandarin in here is like, it's where it's at, okay? It really is. It's like they got the best mandarin stuff out there that they could uh, with this one. Um, so the pear. Now, as I've been testing this one out, um, I, you know, it, the pear doesn't really show itself. Like the mandarin is, it's all about the mandarin, right? But the pear doesn't get a moment to shine on its own. You never get the feeling, oh yes, of course, this is a pear fragrance. The pear here seems to be utilized as a sort of link between, I mean, if there is any pear, they say there's pear in here, but I can't. It might be connecting the musk with the mandarin, hence kind of being lost, you know? It feels like it's a little bit lost between the musk and the mandarin. It feels like it's it's somewhere else. I don't know. Maybe it's a link that mellows down um, the, the, the musk a little bit. But ambrette and benzoin. Now, the benzoin here, you got to wait for the dry down. And here we get to the first complication. This perfume does not last long on my skin, like one hour, and then we've already hit that dry down where the benzoin and that synthetic musk are all you get there, but it's not a warm, encompassing musk. It's, it, it starts smelling metallic synthetic. Uh, and it's such a pity because I thought to myself, if this one starts so strong with the mandarin and the opening note, it's going to kind of it surprised me. I was like, this is a good Mandarin. So let's see how this one, like this one has something to say. I'm sure there must be something. If the Mandarin is so majestic, who knows what's hiding underneath that Mandarin. Once that Mandarin slowly dissipates, what's going to come to the surface from underneath? And you keep waiting and sniffing and waiting and sniffing and it smells clean and it smells citrusy, zesty, mandariny, and time passes and, you know, here I is still sitting, waiting for that magic to happen hiding underneath the mandarin and you wait and you wait and you wait and the magic doesn't happen once the mandarin dissipates you're left with that synthetic very close to the skin simple tone fragrance and you're like oh okay crickets and back to the concept of california sunsets this ain't how a California sunset smells like. Trust me, I know. But it can smell like this in a poetic vision of California. It's like a poeticized version of California. It's like how somebody like, let's say, Jacques Cavalier, who spends his days in Grasse or somewhere in France, you know, would envision California to be like when, when he visits it. And I, I probably... Rich people like that, when they go to visit California, they're going to stay in some villa. And because he's a perfumer, he's probably going to have a villa that has all these plants and exotic plants. You know, in California, a lot of exotic plants can grow because the weather is that good. So he probably has his special trees and mandarins. And I can envision if he had something like a villa where he that he rents or goes to or that he bought, maybe it's his own, who knows. I would imagine it being 
surrounded by special plants, his favorite roses, and then all of these other things. So certain, maybe his garden, I'm, inv I'm just speculating here, has this type of mandarin in it, and he associates that smell to California. I don't, okay? So, but from a poetic point of view, it, it's a very poetic vision of California. So why not, I say, you know, why not give California a nice zesty, citrusy smell, you know, why not, you know, even though California has a lot of poverty and a lot of issues and a lot of places don't smell this clean, zesty and citrusy, but if we are going to poeticize about it, you, you could say this is California. To me, California would be more floral, okay? Uh, I would definitely go into, uh, I would go more into tuberose, I would go more into gardenia, uh, I would go more. I would go more into the '30s aspect of California, more Hollywood in particular, with film noir. You know that fracas, uh, Robert Piguet. That to me, that's how California smells like fracas. Uh, Hollywood in particular, uh, Los Angeles in particular. To me, it's fracas because fracas can be very clean and soapy and very. Bubble gummy as well, which is all very plasticky, which is also typical to Hollywood. But it can also go really deep and mysterious, and it could be very heavy. It could be also a burden. So it goes into that film noir territory as well. Now, I know that this perfume, Louis Vuitton's perfume, is called A California Dream. So it's Jacques Cavalier's homage or vision or dream of what California is. So I get it. But I would expect a dream to be a little bit more visual than just this tangerine blast with the meh try down, you know, if I were to dream about California, I would I would envision David Lynch's Red Room, you know, because he shot most of Twin Peaks there. Like, if we're really going to go into a dream, nobody does dreams in Hollywood like David Lynch. Nobody translates dreams into visuals like David Lynch does. Uh, when it comes to California in particular, you know, when I think, when I, when you put California and dream in one sentence, to me, it always equals David Lynch. The guy lives on Mulholland Drive, literally. One of his houses is there. I mean, he made a movie called Mulholland Drive. Like, <laughs> I mean, you know, so I have the feeling Jacques Cavalier Beltrou does not have that real connection to California to deliver something called a perfume called California Dream, because it needs more opulence. A California Dream, even if you do a modest version of the dream, you still need some depth there. California isn't all bubbly. Zest. Yeah, sure, in the surface it is. But you know, once you scratch above that surface, underneath, there's a rotten depth underneath. And it's very fascinating, rotten depth. And it's worthy of experimenting and experiencing it and translating that also into olfactive uh, sensory delights as perfumes are. Um, so a California dream isn't just Mandarin. It's a lot of other things. And a lot of these dreams in California are also broken dreams, are also really sad dreams. And um, I would personally have appreciated to smell some of that sadness as well in a perfume called California Dream. I think it would have been a, a wonderful opportunity for Louis Vuitton to go that deeper route and, you know, you create a perfume called California Dream and then it smells of tears, sweat, blood, and tears like most people give into California to uh, fulfill their dreams. And a lot of these dreams never come to fruition. So, you know, playing it safe, as beautiful as this Mandarin is, it's playing it safe. I would much rather prefer a huge house like Louis Vuitton to, to dare, you know, to, to go that extra mile and um, and envision a California dream that in the surface is all bubbly and light and happy, but underneath uh, that underbelly of rotting fantasies. Oof, now that's a perfume that I would buy. Full bottle. Full bottle. But as it is now, I told you, my vis visuals of this is like I envision Jacques being rich and renting a villa or buying his own villa somewhere in the outskirts of L.A., where he plants or has people for him plant for him these plants, these mandarin trees, and he sits there when he's on holiday before going to lunch to to the Oscars after party, pre party, whatever have you, and um, 
enjoying the smell in the cool breeze, you know, air of, of his mandarin trees. Like, and it ends there. Sure, it's great if you got the money to get a villa like that. Hey, more power to you. Wear this perfume day and night. But other, other than that, it's kind of like, yeah, here I am in the cement bunker uh, filming this video. No mandarin trees in sight. And, and my California doesn't smell like this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think of a California Dream by Louis Vuitton, if you have it or if you have tried it. In the comment section down below, uh, as you're typing away, let me read what my co-reviewers say about this video or this perfume in the chat section. Hello, Vanny. Ah, we're talking Louis Vuitton. They axed turbulence. Yes, yes, they have uh, cancelled. They have dis yeah, they have discontinued turbulence, but you can still refill your bottle. They still have the refill 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 service available in the boutique, so turbulence is still available as a refill. Uh, Stanislaus says, haven't tried their California Dream yet. The one I kind of lean towards from Louis Vuitton is Matière Noire. I have reviewed that one too. MK, when I think about California, the first thing that comes to mind is the musical Sunset Boulevard featuring Glenn Close. Okay, well, Sunset Boulevard, the first, uh, the movie Sunset Boulevard comes to my mind and Glenn Close ain't in it. Was she even born when they shot it? Yeah, she was already alive. Um, ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. Hoggy Mapleton, I'm trying to find the original George of Be uh, Beverly Hills, not the knockoffs. Can you help me? I'm in California. Um, what do you, there's no knockoff. George of Beverly Hills is in distribution by Elizabeth Arden. Try to get the one that's made in the USA. Don't get the one made in Spain. Very watered down. Uh, also made in UK version is really good. Uh, but they've changed the packaging of it, you know. You think it's it doesn't look like the Georgia Beverly Hills packaging from the 80s. Everything evolves. But it's still the one. You just have to have, you know, you got to check that it's authentic. EA, you know, Elizabeth Arden logo underneath. And then it has, it's made in whatever, you know, made in USA, made in UK, made in France. They're all good. Made in USA is the best one because it's the most intense. Don't get made in Spain. But they're still in production. It's just that the current one is made in Spain. So you got to buy a little bit older one. Um, Mr. Philip Fabulous says, never been to California, but somehow I associate it with oranges and hot weather. I guess this perfume is for, for us ignorant. <laughs> I mean, California is you're not just oranges, you guys. Oh, Vanny. Yeah, Emilia already last week was perishing, was was crying over the loss of two. We were commenting about Turbulence being discontinued last week in the other uh, Louis Vuitton fragrance that I reviewed. You could check it out in the card section up here um, and uh, that other uh, Louis Vuitton review as well. Debbie says, orange groves are still here, I think, LOL, are still there. Sure, but you know, the biggest amount of oranges for the United States of America are all grown in good old Florida. Citrusy fragrances tend to combine very well with my acidic skin and last forever, says MK. Jacob Neroli is not the cousin of orange, but of orange blossom. The best citrusy fragrances, in my honest opinion, are those made by fresh well and the orange blossom where does it head to i ask you haven't tried their california dream yet the one i kind of lean towards oh yeah right we read that one uh, audrey says i think this just screams something i would have worn in my teenage years it will probably smell of nostalgia you know that's a good point audrey this is this this is a very light fragrance to pull off by a teenager today I guess maybe they're also aiming towards that clientele younger clientele to wear something like this although I wouldn't pass it by younger kids to also have more depth to them nowadays I think younger kids could also pull off deeper perfumes like Fracas if they really wanted to uh, but um Another problem of, of for this one is uh, its lasting power is very low. It does remind us of warm weather and sunsets and sunrises, but it's just not there. The lasting power is also... Mm. I mean, he could have called this one my Mandarin Garden, okay? 
You know what I mean? It would have been more honest. It's like a clickbait title. Huh. We were talking about clickbait prior. Uh, this is like a clickbait title for a YouTube video calling a perfume like this California Dream. It promises a dream. But, you know, a lot of Hollywood dreams, California dreams are different from Hollywood dreams, obviously. California isn't all Hollywood. I know. I'm very well aware of that. Uh, but um, it promises you a California dream, but it delivers a Mandarin Orange Garden. You see what I mean? It's a little bit of a clickbait title for me. Jack says, the only images California brings to mind is unbearable heat, headaches, and depression. Um, no, the weather is not that hot. Florida delivers for me unbearable heat and humidity. Florida for me is really tough to handle. California is really good. It's a nice dry, there's always a breeze in the air. Jacob, orange is a fruit. An orange blossom is a flower. Yes, MK, I know. Are you going to reiterate this another 50 times in this chat? <laughs> They don't smell the same at all. That's not true. Aisha says, love the shirt. Thank you so much, Robert. When I think of California, I get all my associations from the GTA, ah, Grand Theft Auto video game series. It portrays it in a very sarcastic way. Hipsters, hypocrites, stalets, and so on. Maybe the, yeah, a perfume called GTA, California, California Dreaming. Now, that would be a perfume that would make more sense for California, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Full of poverty, too. Oh, yes, Robert. A lot. A lot of poverty. Especially in oh, L.A. Mm. Um, right? Yeah, Debbie. This is a clickbait perfume name. <laughs> Debbie said it. Clickbait perfume name. It is. It's a clickbait perfume name. Uh, Empty Senses Jacob. Is that a Benetton shirt? I can't see the logo. If it is, very nice. And what year is that shirt from? Yes, it is, and uh, Jean-Charles de Castelbajac is the creative director for Benetton. He brought the 80s back to Benetton. This is from last summer. I purchased this on sale last summer, so this is summer 2020. Um, he brought back the original 80s logo and the original uh, color blocking, the original Benetton 80s colors. La I, I made a video about this on my channel actually last year about the return of Benetton and um, I was in love with the collection. A lot of the pieces were made in Italy. Prices were really very good. And then when they went on sale, they were even better. So quality is there. Price was really good. So I recommend it. The last season they did this winter, I didn't get any pieces, didn't like it. It lost that 80s magic again. Um, so guys, here uh, to the side, <laughs> I would like to thank all my members and patrons who have pledged to the Fashion Bunker. If you push the join button next to the subscription button today, become a member today, you also gain access to extra perks, such as your name being listed here in the end credits rolling after every video of the Fashion Bunker as co-producers of the Fashion Bunker. You can also gain access to extra perks, such as emojis, special emojis you can use in the live chats in the comment section, but also access to videos before they come to YouTube. And a lot of the videos never come to YouTube. They stay exclusive only to members and patrons. Thank you to all my co-chatters also who have uh, co-reviewed the perfume together with me. <laughs> We're all using already the emojis. Thank you guys so much. Um, what is uh, Empty Sense says? Oh, okay, I would have guessed early 90s lazy to turn cap off. Uh, what do you mean? The the print? No, this, this is 80s. Yeah, this is the 80s logo. Um, Maybe it's just because I'm really not uh, acclimatized to LA heat. I start sweating at 17 degrees Celsius, says Jack. Well, yeah, Great Britain is quite different to California uh, weather, that's for sure. Uh, Rich Mitch says quack. <laughs> well, you guys, what can I say? Thank you so much um, for a wonderful co-review. Oh, Emily says, Bonsoir from Paris. First time live with you, Jacob. Well, hello to you too, uh, Emily with an A. Um, welcome. Welcome to the Fashion Bank and welcome to all of you. Stay tuned for more uh, in enjoyable perfume, perfume reviews, fashion reviews, all sorts of reviews. Uh, but until the next video, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.